What's the best game that's come out in the first half of 2024? We don't know. We all have bad taste, but we're going to talk about the games that we liked so far. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm here with Moriarty. Hi, Em. Hello. I'm here with Chris. Hello. Yo. And I'm here with Brody. Hey. And they all <laughs> made the same sort of grunts. So if you're in the audio realm, I hope you hope you're excited for that. Uh, we're talking about the best games of the year so far. There's a good list of games that have come out this year, contrary to what everybody on Twitter seems to always say about video games. Uh, mm. But that's because there weren't any Nintendo games that came out in the first half of the year. So those babies had nothing to play. I'm How also quickly a baby. do you forget Princess Peach Showtime? Oh, I didn't forget. Kevin. <laughs> Even even the even the best reviews of that game were like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> you could play it, I guess. So. Yeah, it's there. Um, Fifty yeah. bucks. So I figure we'll go round table and kind of just name w what our current game of the year is for the first half of the year, and then we'll talk about them. Uh, M, what's your game of the year so far? So, boy, I have a lot of thoughts about this. So we'll come back to it. Yes, I, I'm gonna explain why. It's Pal World and nothing else. <laughs> ah, okay, I'll explain that's... that because there's a lot. There's a lot of caveats to that. There are so many asterisks next to this. Honestly, it's fair because I think even most of I think all of ours are going to have asterisks, especially probably Brody's. Brody, what's your game of the year? God, that's a t tough call because honestly, I'm I'm in the boat of thinking there haven't been a whole lot of games this year. But then I look at the list of the games I've played. I played eleven. I played eleven games. Not all of them came out this year, but. That's low for me, but I guess it's still pretty high on average. Um, if I had to pick from this list, I would probably pick Animal Well. That's the one I kind Ooh. of expected you would pick, so that's that's fair. Chris, I think you and I might have the same one, I'm going to guess, but what's your what's Ooh. your game of the year? Take a shot if this one surprises you. You won't have to drink. It's the latest Like a Dragon game is probably my favorite so far. Who would have thought? Infinite Wealth? I think my that's golly. I think that's also mine. I have a I have a big old list here, and every time I think about any other game that I really liked from this year, Yakuza Eight was better. Uh, so I'll be different and I'll say Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I don't think I believe that. Oh, the game you were given by Square Enix that we both contractually have to say that was given to us by Square Enix, or yes, else we get in trouble that's true. for twelve in the, months. In the last year or more, we have been gotten a single game from Square Enix, so we must disclose that every time we talk about Square Enix legally. Thank you, Square Enix, for that. I didn't get it from Square Enix. Gum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, M, let's go. Let's go to you first, and we'll hit on Pal World. Um, in in 10 words or less, explain all of your nuanced thoughts on your caveats. This year's games really suck. I hated it. Badly. Yeah, one more. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we had two within five minutes, let's go! Uh, we got a good episode coming up. I this is gonna be easy. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we all played Power World together on stream. Uh, well, the three of us and, and Justin did, I should say. Um, Brody, you're Justin for this podcast now. Um, Ooh, it's me. I Justin. mean, he was there as frequently as Justin was, to be that, fair. That's fair. Justin was just running away from us. He was our father the entire time. Um, <laughs> I, I enjoyed the bit I played of Power World uh, for what it was, but it was also, I played it like an early access game, which it was and is, yeah. you know? So yeah, I kind of like, jump in, that, you do whatever. And... I had that metered perspective on it, where I think a lot of people expected it to be the game that sold 40 million copies instead of just being an early access game that also sold sold 40, 40 million, million copies. copies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it was 20, 25 or 30 million. It was copies. something insane what, what, either way. Yeah, absolutely insane. People may not understand uh, that this is one of the best selling games of all time. Right? <laughs> just one of the craziest best selling games of all time. Um, and it probably will remain one of the best-selling games. Like, I bet it's in the top 50, you know? That's, that's definitely uh, the top 50, yeah. One of the craziest things. Um, made so much money, and and it's not particularly good, but I spent a lot of time with it, right? Um, I played it for, I don't know, 50 or 60 hours. Uh, I had a separate world with you guys. I had a world with my partner. I, I, like, I played the game... Um, enough to feel that I completed it, right? I didn't do everything. Like, I didn't get the Jet Dragon or anything, but, like, it's my first Pokemon game, and I completed it. I feel, I feel good about that, and I'm happy with it, right? 
Um, but that's not why it's the game of the year. Because I didn't, I don't like look fondly on my time in Pal World. I don't look back in and be like, man, I really, I enjoyed the, it was fine. It was so fine. It was one of the most mid experiences ever. But like, what else is there this year that I would consider to be really, really good, right? And it's like, you've got Helldivers 2. I mean, oh, yeah. that was fine, but that's not a game that I, I look at fondly. I enjoyed playing that with my friends. I could say the same thing about Fortnite, right? Like, it's the exact same experience <laughs> to me between Helldivers and Fortnite. Um, I've been playing the first Descendant recently, which is just, it's a, a carbon copy of, of Destiny with absolutely no heart or soul <laughs> whatsoever. Oh, so a carbon copy of Destiny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's right there. You, um, just... you know, we've got Manor Lords, which was another early access game that I played for like a day and a half. And then I was like, yep, I've experienced all there is to experience there. Um, most recently, I've been playing Kill the Justice League. And it's not that bad, to be clear. It's terrible, but oh. it's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> and like, what I find is that I'm in this this weird limbo where everything feels really soulless to me. Right, like every game that I've been playing, I I feel like Stan in uh, in South Park, right? Where it's like everything is just absolute garbage. And go ahead. Have you played the new hit Hoyoverse game, Zenless Zone Zero? I have not. Hashtag I'm really not sponsored. Thank it's you easy. for beating me to it. <laughs> Thank you for beating me to It all me feels that. really, really soulless. Is the problem right? And, and it's sort of. It's not surprising to me that this is the year of the layoffs, right? Mm -hmm. And and I saw uh, maybe two or three weeks ago that New Zoo, who does a lot of surveys and statistics, and they're really you know good at like putting out reports on industries, and uh, they put out a, a report on the industry of, of gaming, which they do every year, and found that sixty percent of the playtime of all games were spent on games that are six years old or older. 60% of all playtime for the year of that. 2024 was spent in Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, yeah. League of Legends, The Sims 4, and Grand Theft Auto V. And mm. boy, it sure does feel that way, doesn't it? Because those are the games that I played this year. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. I've been playing a lot yeah. of Fortnite. I've been playing a lot of The Sims, right? It goes back to that thing we talked about uh, a number of episodes ago. I don't remember exactly which episode, where we were talking about uh, that that Twitter thread from a former Square Enix marketing uh, employee uh, of some sort who was talking yeah. about the stuff that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and XVI and, and et cetera have been running into where like they're being seen as disappointments in terms of sales, not because of the sales performances themselves, but because if you just put that money in the stock market, yeah. you would have made more of a return over that time span in part because these games were being developed and, and pitched with the idea that, oh, well, these are the games we'll be competing with in this time window, so we just need to get people's 60 or now $70. Uh, compared to now, now it's you're competing for time as well, because Fortnite's free, so why would I spend $70 and time on a thing when I can just spend zero on the on Zenless Zone Zero, the next hit game from Hoyoverse, uh, hashtag not sponsored. Zenless Zone Zero? Oh, will be. Yo, I mean, the, the thing is, though, right? Like, Netflix, and we've said it, I know I've said it several times on this very podcast, Netflix doesn't consider other streaming services to be a competitor, yeah. right? They consider Fortnite to be their main competitor. Yep. And Fortnite doesn't consider, you know, uh, um, your, your big, call, you know, whatever single-player game to be a competitor. It doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they look at these, these time sinks which are typically free, as the big thing. The, the, the first Descendant that I mentioned is a free game. You know, um, uh, Pal World was on Game Pass. Helldivers 2 was on everything for free for a lot of people, you know, on PlayStation and stuff. It was These actually not free on PlayStation, believe it or not. I thought it was. But no, that's, the that's, that's, the one, that's the one they didn't put for free, as they usually do. It was still like $19 or whatever. It's not a, a big investment. These are cheap games. And or they're free games, the Hoyoverse games. I mean, like, you know, Roblox is free and, and Minecraft, everybody has a copy of it by now. Um, in fact, that might be the, the most expensive game that's on these lists because I think it never goes on sale less than $30. Yeah. And, and yet, you know, this is where all the time gets spent. And uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, when we talk about the um, uh, uh, 
idea of of investing a game and we look at like i'm sorry i'm I'm kind of rambling here when we looked at (laughs) the the cost of oh tomb raider failed and hitman failed and sleeping dogs failed and all of these games sold two to four million copies and you go well no they didn't they sold, fail and they sold a lot more than that to be clear like i think i think tomb raider failed with like eight million sales right you know like it's that like, was no, the... they didn't fail they're huge yeah. mega hits but then you compare that against well if we just invested all of that money in nvidia and it's like well, yeah yeah <laughs> and you know I'll, if i invested 10 grand in, in nvidia i'd be a millionaire today i'll jump off the the, de- the depressing part of what you were saying uh, uh, to jump into Final Fantasy in a moment, I do want to jump back quickly and touch on something you said, which was uh, that Pal World was your first Pokemon. And if you want to watch M's second Pokemon coming very soon to patreon.com slash crub, I'm going to be going through, and probably Chris as well, I'm not sure, we're going to be going through a number of Pokemon episodes with M from the first season, uh, a game series he's never played before, to uh, get his experience with the anime and then ask him what he thinks a Pokemon game plays like based on his experience with the anime. Uh, we're getting up close to the Pokemon, the first movie in the podcast, Amon sub series on patreon.com slash crub as well. It is as little as $5 a month for every piece of video content we offer, which is over a hundred hours of bonus content, as well as uh, $10 a month for all the audio content, including podcast Amon uh, and other, uh, other fun stuff like that. And if you join any of our, our platforms, whether it's patreon.com slash crub, crub.org slash uh, join to join the discord and uh, support us via Twitch or YouTube or anything, you get access to uh, Book Crub. M, do you want to talk about Book Crub briefly? Sure. In fact, if you jump in right now, maybe by the by time... the time this airs, I think it will have happened. Yeah, you're kind of out of luck if you're listening to this live. I guess uh, not live, rather. Um, so every month we will choose a game that is free on one of the various services, whether it be Epic or Nintendo Switch Online or or Xbox Game Pass or whatever, and uh, we'll play it for a month and then we'll get together and we'll talk about it and this month we are doing the uh chivalry 2 which Mm -hmm. i have a lot of thoughts about because i've actually i've been playing it quite a bit and uh we're going to talk about that uh together on the discord which i'm sure there's a link somewhere crub.org slash join if you want to join the discord that part is free the book crub part is part of the patreon slash youtube slash twitch suite so if you uh, have any of your accounts linked in some way when you're supporting crub you'll get into the book crub room and all the the special awesome rooms where we show pictures of justin nude that's legal right we can talk about that yeah, yeah, yeah. Have those? Okay. Cool. he's not 19 anymore so <laughs> So uh, going to the depressing part, and we were talking about the Final Fantasy thing, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Rebirth. Uh, We've talked about it a bunch on the podcast, and I know, Chris, you've almost beaten it. Brody, you've almost beaten it. And we all kind of- I have beaten it. Oh, you have now. That's right. I forgot. We talked about it. That's that's how much we talked about it. Um, (laughs) I was looking, because I, you know, editing the show, I would hear every time you talk about the thing, and I realized, like, I've only been on one episode with you this entire year, because it kept being like, man, I'd love to talk with Kevin about this game on the podcast, and we just we're never on it together. We just missed each other. Um, Well, now we can, uh, except without spoilers, Uh, still, because I, yeah, we probably can't. Um, My thing with Seven Rebirth, again, very briefly, is I think it's the perfect example of what a 2024 game currently is to go to m's point about games kind of being a little depressing right now uh because it feels like after seven remake came out and they got criticized for the game being a a bit too short for only being 30 to 40 40 hours hours. god forbid only only um they started looking at other competitors and trying to compete with them so you have things like well now you can play piano like it's the last of us guitar (laughs) <laughs> or now there's an open world, which is what people obviously would have wanted out of the second part of seven anyway, but it's got a bunch of Ubisoft towers and side missions and card games and card games and card games and card games. And now, also now the card game is the best part. I'm honestly, the gonna... card game's pretty rad. I will agree with you on that. The card game's but, awesome. But there's a whole chapter dedicated to playing the card game. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Book ended by chapters that involve dancing and then going to the beach. So there's a lot of issues with how I think Seven Rebirth structures itself because it feels like it took all of the tropes of every major AAA open world experience uh, of mm-hmm. the last, you know, 10 years or so and said, let's do that without thinking about why those things do that. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of shoehorning and everything, man. 
right? Like in, in Final Fantasy, we've talked about how many mini games there are that end up feeling like just, I don't know, puffery, right? Yeah. And, and, and it, to be fair, Rebirth is an incredibly faithful experience to the middle part of Final Fantasy VII. And I think that's what I consider bold about it in some way is that after the first game went and said, hey, everything you've thought about seven is now up in the air, they then took you on a pretty close to one to one retelling of the middle part of the game uh, to say nothing about the final couple hours of the game, of course. But up until at least that point is is pretty fairly the middle of Final Fantasy seven. And Man, that sounds like I burnt yeah. out right before the part of the game I wanted to get to the whole time. That's kind of the blue ball part of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is, is yep. man, there's so much shit there. Chris, um, since we haven't talked about it, what are what are your thoughts on it on the podcast? Uh, it's a game of peak and valleys in terms of my energy toward the game, because I'd go through and I'd do everything in one of the areas in the game, right? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm feeling good. I get to the next area and be like, okay, I just want to see the story. So I hurry through that area then in the next area i'm like oh yeah let's do everything in this area i guess i should go back and do everything in the last area and i just (laughs) peeked and volleyed through the whole thing and burnt myself out by the end i not to jump to a different game that we mentioned but it playing this right after infinite wealth it felt like the flirting versus harassment meme (laughs) where like everything infinite wealth did ff7 rebirth kind of does but i like the way infinite wealth did it more so i'm like you're okay Rebirth, not as okay, but still okay. But I was calling yeah. HR with Rebirth, and, basically. And to go to your peaks and valleys thing, I, I will say, the thing that uh, Seven Rebirth Stockholm syndromed me into by the end was realizing that like each area when you start feels like it's a little bit, not overwhelming, but they're like, okay, I've gotten to a new area, now I have to stop the story if I'm a real gamer and go do all the mm-hmm. side content first. And I realized as time went on that each area was actually pretty close to masterfully paced for each of like the open world sections took me, you know, an hour or two. And then I would go and do an hour or two of game. And then right when I got done with that part of the game, I'd be like, well, there's nothing that's immediately pulling me into wanting to continue the story. So now that I'm in the next open world area, an hour or two of that. And then I'm like, okay, I've had enough of that. And I moved on. And like, it was exhausting at first. And then as time went on, I kind of realized no, there's a little bit here that like it was created with like a, a a catered design philosophy, especially when we get to like mm. the final couple areas uh, of the open world stuff where they start actually doing story things with them uh, after 40 hours of the game. And by 40, <laughs> I mean like 70. Like at the least it feels like 70. For yeah, sure. <laughs> it's 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 an exhausting game. Uh, and I hate that about it because it's such a damn good game too. the gameplay is so fluid and fun and enjoyable. And yeah. It, it, once they added the the smooth uh graphics setting it looked less like shit um <laughs> which was nice you know yeah. always yeah. a help yeah 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 um brody do you have anything you want to say about seven before chris and i gush about final fantasy uh yakuza no i mean you said most of my thoughts already on it it is just an exhausting game it's very fun when you get to play the combat you're having the time of your life it is just why a isn't there more of awesome... that it's just in the arena it's part god damn it sorry chris <laughs> This is the this is the F word episode. <laughs> yeah, let's go. No, the thing is, is yeah, it's it's in the arenas, and the arenas are fine. They're fun. They're, they're in some way they're almost like puzzles. Yeah, in, in yeah. a way, like you have to like some of use them at your, least use your your moves and stuff. And that's I like that. Yeah, I wish there was more of that moment to moment throughout the game. That's kind of where um, I was. Like the open worlds don't have any combat encounters outside of the six that you do for Chadley. Like like the open worlds are functionally empty. 90% Chadley. of the time. Yeah. Uh, Chadley is like, you start saying something ironically, and then it sticks and you hate yourself. Because in Remake, I was like, Chadley, that's a funny name. This guy's really funny. He's a little android boy. Ha! Huh. And then in Rebirth, he has like eight times the dialogue of any other character combined. <laughs> like, I hated okay, him. I, I hated I think him I'm in good. Remake. <laughs> I think I'm going on Chadley. If he's, like, crucified in part three, I think I'll be happy. It's There's just a little too much. I hated that little guy. I was I was going to call him a little effer, but I stopped myself. I, I hated him you. so much. And then in Rebirth, they give you so much of him 
that I feel like that was my Stockholm syndrome because I'm like, I guess I have to like you see because <laughs> otherwise I'm just mad the whole time. See, I feel like I feel like I would have been fine with Chadley. Like, I think Chadley is the perfect example of the flirting versus harassment that Chris mentioned, because in, in remake, mm. he's just there for a little bit. And it's kind of funny in Rebirth. Every time you do anything, he stops you, makes you pull out your phone gun, and then talks to you via <laughs> the, the telepathy through the phone gun to say, hey, Cloud, you did good. And then, like, you can't, like, you can skip it, but you can't skip the animation of you pulling up your phone gun. Sometimes they let you walk around as he talks, and sometimes they don't, and there's no rhyme or reason <laughs> why. So and then he starts arguing with, like, his <laughs> the, the, twin sister. The girl there's a, there's a, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they added double the Chadley. Ah! If there is a Chadley of the Year category, like that's a clean sweep on that one. I, just, right? I can't think of the, any other the, games with Chadley. The director of the game had to know. Like he had to fully understand what he was doing when they did that. It yeah. feels like one of those things where you dig into it, you know, and you look. It's like, oh, you know, women in Japan love Chadley. He's a fan favorite <laughs> character, so that's why he's here. It feels like one of those things where you dig into it. He, it's he like, won oh, the Smash okay. ballot. He won the Smash Bros. Honestly, Chadley yeah. and Smash would go hard. Like he has the I really Sephiroth wanted intro. To <laughs> I, speaking hmm. of Smash, I really want it to be a thing of like where where Sakurai was like, oh, uh, Kirby makes it out of the opening cutscene because he's the only character that could feasibly do it up against this opponent or whatever. I want them to be like, yeah, we had to give Chadley that many lines because he's the only character that it made sense to have on comms. He's the only character that can beat Sephiroth. You know, <laughs> yeah, spe to death. speaking of characters on comms, though, like, my, that's another thing is like the thing that's most bold about it. And this is the last thing I'll say about this game. The thing that's so bold about Rebirth is that it's not just uh, the second game. It is quite literally just right where you leave off at the end of Remake. They put you there. So all the characters are quiet and like, man, that just happened, huh? Like, they're all just kind of not really talking to each other. There's not really any characterization happening because they're already all comfortable with each other. So they don't take that time to, to rebuild them, for lack of a, a better term, uh, to rebuild mm. those relationships. Which then means that Chadley is the only character that talks for more than five minutes for the first four <laughs> hours of the game until after you're <laughs> off the boat. And the boat is chapter five. Mm. So, like... Yeah. <laughs> It's they flirt with some characters having tension, right? Like Cloud and Tifa are kind of in a weird little thing, but then they're just like, well, we have to act fine around the others. And Cloud's like, yeah. And then it's just like, all right, sweep, sweep that away for like 20 hours. We'll get back to it in 60 hours. It's like, uh, okay, they should having a good time, but I really like the characters in the last game. And then they're here, but they're fine. They they should have Tifa sing karaoke about how she's secretly in love with Cloud. That's what they should do. Uh, speaking of Yakuza, yeah. like a Dragon Eight, Infinite Wealth. Uh, that's probably honestly okay. still going to be my game of the year. Like it's that or Astro, unless anything else comes out that like completely sweeps me. Um, yeah, it's it's Chris. You 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 have faster things to say than I will probably. Faster things to say. Well, it's a game that. Um, it, I agree. It's a game. It's a game. <laughs> um, Brody, Zenless Zone Zero. <laughs> it's it's weird because it's like I said, like everything Rebirth does, Infinite Wealth kind of does in that it starts off with a lot of the characters kind of already being comfortable with each other, right? They spend like eight or nine chapters running around looking for a woman, and then that's kind of the only plot, mm -hmm. really, if you look at it. Like things happen, right? There's some issues with Danny Trejo and uh Daniel Day Kim is sometimes around, I guess, but for the most part, nothing is really happening in that game. And then they'll be like, oh, well, you want to go play Animal Crossing for 20 minutes, right? You can't skip the Animal Crossing. And I'm like, I guess I can't skip the Animal Crossing. <laughs> you know, it's just doing everything Rebirth did. But I'm like, you know, at least it's funny not, here. Now you know, that at you, least I'm like, OK, now that you mentioned the Animal Crossing, I forgot that I was like, man, that's like a really intrusive hour of game. And then I, now that I've played Rebirth, I'm like, man, an hour of intrusive game. That ain't bad. Like, <laughs> that's not too bad. <laughs> like, even when Infinite Wealth is like, oh, well, what if we had a Pokemon knockoff and then flushed it out even more than last time? I'm like, okay. Yeah, 3v3 battles. Why don't I spend half an hour on this in a forced way? At least it wasn't yeah. and <laughs> the Queen's Blood tournament, which in chat, uh, I think Chimbus did point out. That you can skip the card tournament, but why yeah. would you? You have to be like, a gamer, you know. You can skip it, but you have to go out of your way to skip it to the point that it's not much shorter to just actually do it, or to, like yeah. to, to skip it first doing it. I was going to say get one of the best interactions. The thing I was going to say about um, 
Infinite Wealth's like side content is that Yakuza always does that sort of thing where they're like, okay, we're going to pull you away to give you a tutorial for the side thing. Uh, so it mm. wasn't too excessive to me outside of the Animal Crossing stuff. Uh, and that was only because it was like, oh, the game's really getting good. All right, see you in 48 hours uh, of in-game time. And you can go to the it's beach so for contrived. some month. Is it Ichiban's just on the beach and he gets like knocked out or something or a dolphin steals him away and he wakes up and he's like, oh, I guess I'm here now. I'm like, the plot was finally doing something. Wait, go, go back, go back. Yeah. Like <laughs> it, US cancer. Eight really meanders for a lot of a lot of the time in the middle, like you said, Chris. And that's my biggest critique of it is like how it meanders before remembering that Kiryu exists. Uh, because yeah. so eight for those that maybe are somehow unfamiliar and we're not going to hit on spoilers, of course, for this or a- any of the games that we're talking about today. Uh, mm-hmm. Kiryu's back. Uh, he never really left, but now he's back. And it's the final Kiryu story for real. We promise. Definitely not a lie. Uh, but he comes back and then he's just a secondary character helping Ichiban out for a while because they have a shared goal of getting to meet this character. And then mm. they halfway through go to the, the big story beat, which is not a spoiler because it's in the trailers of Kiryu having cancer. Uh, yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to we're supposed to make you think he's going to die, whether he does or not. You know, who knows? But uh, like we're, we're supposed to make you afraid that he will for the big, you know, the big story beat of the game. And then they finally mm. get to the Kiryu stuff and the game like really starts coming together like after so many stops and starts of, well, we got to find this character. Okay. We found them. Oh, they got kidnapped again. We got to find them again. Oh, they got kidnapped again. Oh, we got to find them again over and the over again. The princess is in the other castle. Straight up. I was going to make the princess peach joke. Um, yeah. But even peach doesn't get captured this much. <laughs> and yeah, like it's only for about two hours of, of in-game time that I'm really like, okay, this is getting excessive, uh, you know, of actual story time. And then they get to the Kiryu stuff and like they split the parties. So you have now the two protagonists doing their own thing. And Mm -hmm. that's where the game's magic really, really hits. I don't love everything about the last, you know, run of the game, but it's maybe still one of the best runs that any Yakuza game has had. And that's saying a lot for how good Yakuza games can be about having like those those climactic final uh, sometimes 15 hours. Yeah, yeah. It's a good stretch. It, I just think of infinite wealth and it's like, man, I enjoyed everything. I think I put a hundred plus hours into it, you know, which uh, I guess I tend to do in these games anyway, but yeah, the, it just, for a long time, I'd been thinking about how these games would just like put a stop sign in your face and be like, we have weird side content. Here's a character that will introduce you to it. Come this way. You know, maybe it's supposed to be like how in Japan, if you walk around Kabuki Cho, people will try to usher you into their bar or something. Right. But I was just always thinking about that from like five or zero onward. I started noticing it. And I'm like, this feels like a problem. Like I'm used to it, so I get it. But yeah. I feel like for a lot of people, like I you try and get people to play zero, and this is a tangent, but they play it and it's just like, okay, we are walking. Okay, there's karaoke. Okay, there's here's the slot cars, like, here's all the weird things. And I'm like, I hope this resonates with people. But eight is really the thing where that ramped up, and I'm like, man, this is like I get it, but even I'm sitting here like this is too much. Yeah, like but like the the fact that they have to spend the time saying, "Oh, here's this island, and we're gonna spend three days of in-game time uh, showing you every bit of the mechanics," <laughs> rather than just saying, "Hey, this is here. You want to go back? Okay." Like yeah, like that's where it got but, excessive. That's Sega trying it, to make their super game. Oh, the super game! Don't I, get me started. I mean, that game has games. quite literally everything in it. It's got a Pokemon game. It's got Animal Crossing. It's got uh, the longest arcade game I think I've ever played. What was uh, that shopping cart thing you showed me one time? Oh, yeah, it's got ta- Crazy Taxi, but you're delivering food as an Uber Eats driver. <laughs> Speaking of super game, that is going to be Crazy Taxi, right? Like, That's oh, one yeah. of them. Yeah. This yeah. new open world GTA killer they're trying to do. Well, apparently it was a it was a it was a miss misread. It was supposed to be like there's five different games coming out instead of five games in one or something like that. Right. But I'm then, talking about the, the new th- information that we have. About yeah, the well, the, yeah, yeah, because we know it's going to be like an MMO type yeah. of deal now. So it, it, I'm I'm interested in what they do with that. I don't know how that's going to work out, but everything has to be a service game now, so I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, I know this is a, a huge digression. Here, yeah, yeah. Though, um, but I'm curious. So now that you you're talking about your game of the year, which is I- Infinite Wealth, um, is it as good as the last one? Better. 
much better. Like, and that's what I was. That's what I was going to hit on next, actually. So thank you for thank you for segueing us here. Uh, I read the room. I I think it's better because I think that seven has maybe the best story of any of the games outside of like judgment, like of the of the regular mm. Yakuza games. I think that seven has the best story because Ichiban's immediately introduced as a protagonist in such a way that he's he's so genuine and likable and he, he is like that lovable idiot except that his his ability to stay genuine no matter what pulls people in to root for him like he's just an anime protagonist in a lot of ways and and yeah. his story tying along with the story of the past uh, of the yakuza series essentially of the the concept of the yakuza was so compelling in seven and it did the thing that a lot of the later yakuza games and judgment and eight as well have done where like there's this big government conspiracy also going on in the background to like tie into the the crime underbelly stuff going on uh seven did it just about perfectly there's a little besides mirror face and <laughs> eight doesn't do it as well in that regard because it tries to tell two more personal stories and I think that it just it got a little too long in the tooth by trying to be too much of game and get rid of Kiryu in terms of, you know, his story's done for sure, definitively. Uh, and Ichiban's story is is continuing, but Ichiban's kind of not really the he's just kind of there for a lot of the game. Uh, the thing that makes it a better game is the fact that as a game, it is so much better. Like Seven's a very mm -hmm. basic RPG because supposedly they had the April Fool's joke of it being an RPG and fans were like, oh, that's really funny. You would be really cool. I'd be into that. And then in seven months, they were like, yeah, why don't we actually make that the game that's coming out in seven months? Supposedly. I, I don't believe that. That's according a lie. to them. That's a straight up like, like that is Jez San met Miyamoto and said that Croc inspired <laughs> Mario. That's that's what that is. But uh, it was a very basic game as a result. I didn't really interface with a lot of the class stuff uh, too much because yeah. it was real easy to beat the game while 30 levels under leveled. I did it. Uh, eight, I did interface with those systems a lot more because there's a lot more synergy between the the different, you know, uh, skill sets and the elemental abilities have a lot more of an impact going forward. Yeah. Uh, it's just so fun to mess around and by virtue of uh, Hawaii being an even bigger area than than Yokohama and being more uh, filled with things and different things, uh, it meant that there were more sectors of town that could be like, here's high level enemies here. There's different enemies here. You might find a Sujimon here. That's the weird uh, <laughs> super jittery men. That's the Pokemon thing. You beat them and then you capture them. It's it's a great game. Big game of the year. Um, yeah. It just felt... Like like eight eight genuinely might be one of the best RPGs I've ever played in terms of being an RPG and having that fun gameplay loop that I just I would go in New Game Plus and and do it again if you didn't have to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Yeah, um, I think there's something to be studied about how good of a tribute it is to the genre while also being an incredibly good contribution to the genre mm -hmm. in its own rights also yeah like it's a very weird line it walks of like well we very obviously love everything that came before. And then we're making our own mark. And I think that's pretty impressive because you see it. It's usually one or the other, right? It's like you're either a landmark title or you're just yeah. a love letter. And that's kind of about it. Right. So I don't see a lot of games thread that needle very well like this one did. Like to go back to, to Seven Rebirth, like how Seven Rebirth just copies a lot of open world mechanics and doesn't think about them. <laughs> Everything Yakuza 8 does, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, sorry. Everything that game does is done with intent. They, they studied the genre. They are fans of the genre and they figured out ways to appeal to just about everybody. Even the people that are like, I would rather this be a Kiryu beat em up game because Kiryu's ult is he goes into beat em up mode and just starts punching people like it was the old games, which is just yeah. sick. It's just rad. It's even though it has a story that leans too much into being kind of weird JRPG story at times, uh, not in terms of like the actual the the plot of it itself, but in terms of, well, we need to go this long, so we need to have these extra twists and turns that don't have anything to do with the plot, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, even though yeah. it has those more than prior games did, I, I never really got tired of it outside of like the Animal Crossing part where I'm like, I really want to continue the story and I can't because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's right. Like. They do the the Kiryu thing right around then where they're like, oh, yeah, Kiryu has cancer. That's right. We just we forgot about that until now. I'm pretty sure that story beat happens where they remind you that he's supposed to be like, you're supposed to be afraid he's going to die. 
And yeah. then they're like, it's, go to go to the island. It's right around when they filmed the video for him to find his mom or whatever, right? Like yeah. It's literally right as some things are finally starting to happen. Yeah, it's a, a, anyway. But yeah, yeah, I think the last thing I'd call it out without going too long on about it is how well it has a reverence for the series for longtime fans, but also pushes it to the side so that if you are one of the new yep. players, you don't have to go through and wonder what the heck's going on with that. Yep. Which uh, is some restraint that could have been practiced elsewhere in the game, maybe, but there is some like genuinely crazy deep cuts in some of the stuff they do with Kiryu when you're going around and kind yep. of digging into his like memories and his past and just kind of like, if this is the end of my life, what am I doing? Kind of questions that I thought were interesting for the character, right? A lot of good and character work kind of tucked away to the side there. I, I will hit on that super briefly because I do want to get to Animal Well with you, Brody. Um, the the thing that I'll say to bounce off of that was like some of those deep cuts. Like I was freaking crying at points over the most the, the the most stupid side characters that you can imagine, the most the weirdest references to some of the old games that you wouldn't expect to see, and mm -hmm. like they all got me. And in the same breath, the one thing that it does is Kiryu's character has always been stubborn. He's always been, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it my way, period. And, and that's, that's it. And so for the entire game, once you get to the point of, well, Kiryu, why don't you go to a doctor? <laughs> like, why, like, why he's don't, just like, no, I have to, like, I have to like, deal with this on my like own. He's this treating is my it, burden. Yeah, it's like, this is my penance <laughs> for all the bad I've done. And and like he's right. like continuing to punish himself even after there's a chance for him to like, you know, have a, a potential good ending. And it's once you get to the Kiryu part of the game, or rather once you have Kiryu as a separate like section of the game, yeah. uh, that you have those moments of him like reminiscing on his past and saying, like you said, Chris, if I'm going to go out, like whatever. The whole time you're you as the player are screaming at him like, dude, you can live. <laughs> Maybe you can't, but at least you could try. Like people people want to yeah. see you live. And so there's that, like, through that side story stuff, Kiryu's like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe it's not worth just giving up and being stubborn, which is the whole thing of Kiryu's, uh, Kiryu's character arc over the entire series. It to, was like, incredibly refreshing to see them finally examine this character and let him look back. Because, like, I love these games, but he's the same in every single game, yeah. right? And if you look at these, like, if you study the stories of these games or characters, you're just like, man, Kiryu's just always like that, huh? So just finally letting him look back and scratch his head and go, huh. It's what makes six retroactively kind of better to me. Like I, I always kind of liked six once I played it of like what it was doing because I played six after seven. So there was mm -hmm. like six was Kiryu's story ending. Seven was the end of the clan uh, of the Yakuza clans. Uh, and now eight is like ostensibly maybe actually finally the end of Kiryu's story. We don't know. Uh, who knows? Uh, we won't tell you, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know he'll he'll be back somehow. Uh, they'll they'll find a way. It'll be get to the credits and it just says Kiryu will return. Yeah, Kir, it'll be uh, Kiryu basically. will return and it'll be um uh what's it called um Dead Souls two. That'll be it. Hey Brody. <laughs> hey, it's me, video game donkey. I heard you've been <laughs> playing my new game Animal Whale. What a segue! I, <laughs> it's so good that you can shout it out on the crowdcast. Could you uh, tell me you're, a little more about you're, it? You're making me not want to sing this game's praises. Uh, what's wrong? Rack rocks? Ratchet and <laughs> I was I was so Rack ready to Rack say Rack. everything I like about this it's game. It's like Halo 3, right? Do you like the lack of combat abilities? <laughs> God. I, Animal Well is a game that surprised me, and, I, and that's kind of why it's my game of the of the year so far anyway because i'm always looking for something that's new that's unique that or or at the very least scratches an itch that very few games do and when they do they're usually indie games that does something that i personally haven't haven't seen yet and animal well does this in the sense that it is kind of it's an interesting uh example of the relationship that genres can have as they evolve and inspire other genres and then be able to take what those games later have done and bring them back into its sort of the initial form and and go out from there and what i mean by that is i think it's incredibly uh novel of them to have effectively made a 2d metroidvania game that functions as an immersive sim rather than a lock and key type of game mm -hmm. um and I don't know, I, I think it's a game that I presume most people will have different playthroughs 
when they go through it, right? Because no one's going to get the first items all the same. Um, I ended up getting an item that basically gave me infinite height right off the bat. And so I was able to solve a lot of puzzles without much of that, like, Metroidvania, oh, I feel I'm, I'm stopped, right? Like, I'm stopped, I have to go back and find a new item to, to, to continue. There was some of that. Mm. I, there was a little bit of that, kind of. Um, but generally, if I thought about it, I could use whatever items I had on hand to, uh, to make my way through. And what I really enjoyed is that it, 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 li it, like very few games I find nowadays, it inspired within me a sense of wonder and a sense of like, oh my God, that's possible. Whenever I would think to myself, okay, this is what this item does. Yeah. Like, let's say the, the, the disc item, it goes side to side, you shoot it, it can hit switches, whatever. And then I thought to myself, what if I jump and try to land on it? Like, is that anything? And all of a sudden I had this perfect hovercraft to go left and right as like infinite even amounts better you also wall. spin as it spins like your exactly, character model yeah. or your, your sprite like rotates yeah, mm. yeah yeah and then you find out okay well if i use that in a really tight vertical corridor i can actually you know maybe my bubbles i can't get height with them because it's too tight of a corridor but if i just frame perfect jump and release this this disc thing i can keep getting height in this one specific instance and so having these moments of like basically Everyone li loves to, to sequence break in Metroid, right? The first time in Metroid that you figure out you can use the bombs to get height is like, oh my god, I can access areas that I'm not supposed to. That's awesome. This game is built on that. Like, there is no sequence breaking because you're meant to sequence break it. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. And it's, it's one of those puzzle games that will just, it'll stick with me um, for, for a very, very long time. Um, I don't think it's... I don't think it's as, as it hits the highs of like a like a Hollow Knight per se. I think that's a more rounded out package for me personally. Take a but shot, in, Hollow Knight. In in, well, I, in terms of what's come out this year, though, I yeah. think it's I think it's definitely up there because it would either be that or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because I haven't played anything else that's really hit me. I mean, Penny's Big Breakaway was pretty cool. I have to go play more of that to do the speed runs because it really started to click. Uh, once once you've gotten to the speed runs of it, I've just started playing Zenless Zone Zero, uh, my Taking first Hoyoverse game. Yeah, that'll that'll be the new shot if, one. If I you're think. if you're a, a z z z z z -er, make sure you hit the like button on the on the episode on the video feed, or give us a review on the audio feed and say that you're a z z z z z -er. <laughs> Uh, I will so, so uh, that the reviews will, help us get more. I'm not gonna do this bit anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm gonna I, take out a second mortgage on my home to get the shark made. Someone's gotta. Yeah. I feel bad <laughs> not to distract. I uh, I forgot Penny's Big Breakaway came out this year. I come. I was going through all the games I played this year, and I was like, yeah, I guess I got them all. Completely forgot about Penny's Big Breakaway. Sorry. Take that to Penny's those people. Big breakaway. I'll say on Animal Well, Brody. Uh, one of the things that I think it it does really well, like you said, is I haven't really felt a non Metroid game give me that Metroid sense of discovery uh, outside. Well, I should say a non Metroid or Castlevania Metroidvania, because mm -hmm. you know Castlevanias or Bloodstained. I'll count as as one of those because that's pretty much Castlevania. It's it's as good as it it's as official as it can be without being one obviously um i haven't had those moments of of discovery feel that organic and that uh satisfying in a, a proper metroidvania game that's not official from one of those two genre uh, one of those two namesakes except for animal well did it uh or at least none of them have hit the height of animal well i should say like i've played ori and ori's kind of just a platformer with some you know you get power ups that let you do things. It's it's kind of just a platformer. I don't mean that to detract yeah. from it. It's a very good one, but it's more of a like a Metroidvania light to me personally. I, I bounced off Ori pretty hard, and it's one that I I'd like to go and give a second chance at mm. some point. But I was definitely like, I was craving the I want to get lost in this world, and Ori was like a just you know be it platform good. Do, yeah, like, do platform like, good. Like it's got worlds, yeah. but it doesn't have worlds. But the worlds are are functionally there in a more or less set order unless you're really good at sequence breaking so you're just kind of getting power up and then going like you're doing the metroid thing but it doesn't feel like you're really exploring a world um and, and i will say i have to make the, the token souls reference here 
The Souls games are the other example that have that organic sense of discovery in a Metroidvania sort of way that's not Animal Well or a Metroidvania. Uh, mm. Namesake Metroidvania. Um, so I will mention them as well. Uh, but only one of those came out this year, and that wasn't really a Souls game, so uh, screw them. Yeah, uh, it sounds like you guys like my video game. I unfortunately think, yes. I think I Animal wish, Well. I wish it wasn't his game. It's not his game. I wish people. It's not. That's games. that's kind of that's a really good point, and that's yeah. what I was gonna hit on. Is I feel like mm. I feel like the audience for that game kind of went under tail very quickly. Uh, like I feel like immediately I was like, this is insufferable. Instead of being this <laughs> this this genuine indie hit of the year, it was already like people just saying it's Halo Three. Because that's a donkey joke. It really makes you feel like Animal Well. Yeah, and like I feel oh. like the game deserved better. But I'm also yes. to to his credit, to Donkey's credit, and Big Mode and all of them, they also gave the game the audience it has. Like that game sure, doesn't get recognized. Sure, but like he's still just a publisher, right? Like yeah, let, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying he, he should get credit. More than give them some money. Yeah, and and it's very annoying that people call this Donkey's game. I agree. I'm not, not saying Donkey's game. Not saying he should get the credit for making the game or anything. I'm just saying that by giving it that platform, like like influencer publishing is a thing that people have tried before, and it's been sometimes <laughs> successful. I think this is probably the successful example that I can think of because that um, game did reach an, an audience that wasn't just his fans. No, Yogg's Cast did something. They did a game. Yogg's Cast were in Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing Transformed. <laughs> they also did. They also did something else that <laughs> was Danica was successful. Patrick. Danica Patrick, hot it topic awesome right now. Have you awesome that's the Yogg's cast thing? They, it might have been. They, they did something. Um, I remember they had a game. Yeah. Y'all are forgetting the normal boots dating sim. That was not official, and we're not going to talk about that one. <laughs> oh, it wasn't? Um, I thought it was official. I, I, think mean, they, I think they endorsed well. it after the fact. But anyway, um, I, I, I don't have a ton to say about Animal World because a lot of it's based on your own experiences and discovery, like you said, Brody. And also, it's mm. been a few months, so I don't remember a ton of it. But I, I, I really, really enjoyed most of the game. Like, the, the, last, the last little run was kind of like, okay, this is excessive because they expect you to like go from regular gameplay to like near perfect platforming at the very end and i'm a good platformer but when i die and have to go back to the start and then find and then teleport to the uh the fast travel point and then go through one of the fast travel gates and then go through several rooms to get to the next area to get back to where i was and i died you could just respawn me where i died it's not it's okay you don't have to do that. Yeah. Mm. It's um, it's it's one of those things where it has so many little secrets in it that you can only um, you can only get if you're like paying attention and making like absolutely wild leaps of logic. Um, so, for instance, to to your point, there is like a uh, I know the part you're talking about because it's that one part at the end that makes you go through five screens if you screw up. Mm -hmm. Apparently, and I learned this basically when I was done the game. There is a uh, a song you can play on one of the things that will just warp you right to the teleport room and then oh, yeah. you, can go out, you can go out of the teleporter right beside the room where you have to do the thing that would normally take you five screens and that probably cuts down on like two screens but it's still it, I guess <laughs> yeah really it was bad. one of those where once because I knew about that song it was like specifically that activating that teleporter uh, that, that, that warp door room for some reason I, I don't remember why I had issues getting it to work at first. Like I got, I could get into the teleport room, but not that specific teleporter door. Anyway, it's all, that's all in the weeds. Uh, the rest of the game, I really, I really, really enjoyed. And I enjoyed the fact that it made me uh, challenge myself. Like the, one of the early sections that most players will experience probably first is the, you grab this Frisbee from a stand and then there's a, a giant ghost cat that starts chasing you or ghost wolf. Oh yeah. Go, go. I left that for last because I was like, I'm going to need air. <laughs> so so I did it first, more or less. And I was stubborn at first because it's like you're now doing a pretty precise platforming section across several rooms. Uh, it, the way I did it, I did it blind, not knowing where I needed to go next and having the cat chase me the whole way uh, <laughs> until eventually I gave up near the end. I was pretty close to like it's like 15 rooms you go through. I was like 10 rooms in and I'm like, I don't know how long this is going to go. So I should probably just go finish the level first and then do it once I know where I'm going. But mm. uh, in doing that, like that gives you the disc power up, essentially. Uh, right. And, yeah. The first the first run of it. I did do that. Yeah. Way. 
Yeah. The second one I didn't do till later because you're supposed to do it again with a lot more and you're supposed to manipulate the fast travel. There's a lot of super cool secrets in this game that I think got metagamed too quickly uh, because yeah. of having such a wide audience. Like there were so many Easter eggs and stuff that are really cool, but like... Um, yeah. Well, I, I will say there there are some things in the game where I would almost call it a little too obtuse, not in the sense that it like ruined anything, but like there was definitely there's other like statues in the game that are like, oh, there's a there, it's a circular uh, like there's a circular crevice for you to put something. And I'm like, oh, I got to go back to the cat and take the disc and I got to go all the way through mm -hmm. this. That's insane. And then I would do it. And it's like, actually, that's not the right item. You just needed this other item from this other thing that you did. And I'm like, I spent oh, so yeah. much time. I spent so yeah. much time getting here with the cat chasing yeah. me. Yeah, it's I, I it's a really, really fun game. And I do recommend it uh, for I think it's also free on a lot of the platforms. So there's no reason. Mm -hmm. Not to try it if I'm correct on that. I feel like I didn't pay for it. I feel like it's free on PS Plus. It's de it's definitely free on PS Plus. Yeah, premium. Or so whatever, it's probably on Game Pass. Is. Um, and I think it's it's the kind of game that anyone who is a Metroidvania fan has probably already played. But it's for my, albeit somewhat limited experience, the best combatless Metroidvania I think I've ever played. Um, interesting. Even though I do yeah. have nitpicks about some parts where I'm like, okay, this is a bit too retro NES style go f yourself design like it does that yeah. just enough where i'm like okay maybe maybe you're a little excessive now but it for, also for, it's for hit the vibe. Flaw, yeah for what flaws that i could find in it i'm mm -hmm. very forgiving because it is one of the first games in a long time to give me that sense of wonder and i think that's something that i've only really found in like uh, in the recent years in like uh, like outer wilds like Outer Wilds is the dragon that I'm constantly chasing. I'm I'm looking for an experience like that all the time. And Animal Well was when when I was seeing reviews of it, they're like, oh, it's kind of like Outer Wilds. It's got these puzzles. And I'm like, I played it and I'm like, it doesn't, it's not, it's not like Outer Wild. It does give a but sense more, of wonder. That's but other it's people chasing like the same Wilds. dragon and then saying it's like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, I, and there I is definitely that. like there's a there's a post game that I still have to really get into. There's like two layers of post game. Um, where you have to like find bunnies and then find a thing. And I guess some people say that those puzzles are more like Outer Wilds puzzles. And I'm like, I don't really see it exactly the, probably the way that you do. Because Outer Wilds is a very specific experience. Um, I, I think, would, okay. yeah, I think that stuff that you're talking about from what I've seen kind of feels like game theory bait except game theory is not really it's a, it's still a thing but like that felt like stuff that's like well we're trying to get the deep cut matt pat theories to make the video the, make the game go even more viral uh maybe yeah. i'm cynical about it but that's kind of what those felt like to me because they're so obtuse that it's like they're 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 beyond you know classic nes style throwback yeah puzzles. and like one of the one of them is straight up an arg that you just like you have to look up like you literally just have to look up because it was an arg yeah yeah mm. Um, speaking of Outer Wilds, Emma, I'm going to throw a plug your way because you just, at the time of recording, released your Outer Wilds video. It's a two and a half hour uh, epic digging into, uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I haven't played the game, so I, I can't really talk much about it. Uh, em, do your, uh, plug plug the video. Send send the video. I don't have a good plug for it, but it's a two and a half Watch hour it. look. <laughs> it's a two and a half hour look into the, the psychology um, and language and what the meaning of legacy is and uh the meaning of living not not the meaning of life but the meaning of living and uh it's oh Kira, you should watch that it's a big uh, psychological uh. thing um that people seem to be enjoying apparently they're crying during it so that that's the kind of i often thing cry you're when i hear into. your voice yeah 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 <laughs> I, I, i've been like the number one comment's got to be existential dread which is fun um, so yeah, there sounds like go. a breezy watch. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice, comfy video. You should definitely watch it. That'll be in mm. the show notes, um, most likely. Yeah. Uh, so check that out if you're listening in the audio feed. Uh, and uh, while you're in the audio feed, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, give us some extra support, however you would like to. If you're in the video feed, leave us a review on those audio platforms. But we're not done yet because we have the Crubscriber question of the week a question asked by one of our wonderful Crubscribers at patreon.com slash crub or any of the other you know financial uh, youtube slash twitch slash whatever you want to call them Crubscriptions uh Chris I think you have that queued up correct 
Yes, I do. It comes from Mick Yeager, who we saw at too many games recently. Beat his ass in Pokemon cards. That's true. Then he killed Nico in yeah, real life. Yeah. Justin and I had a good, uh, two good games against him and beat him, and then he whipped Nico's ass 6-0. That's probably what happened. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't there. I don't know. Yeah. No, it, it, was, it was ruthless. Uh, <laughs> his question is, what is the most notable example of a one-hit wonder game dev studio that you can all can think of? I have one that is debatable, but maybe one of the most notable. And then I have one that is not as notable, but really stuck out to me when I thought about it. So I'll go first. Uh, sure. The first one is Niantic, which is probably oh. the arguable one, because I think people ooh, ooh, who ooh, played ooh. Ingress liked Ingress. But Pokemon Go is like the Niantic game, right? And yeah. ever since then, I think they've launched like seven or eight games that are all the same, and they're all trying to be Pokemon Go. None of them are Pokemon Go. There's an NBA one. You could be basketball players. It only lasted and- like six months. Like it yeah. was, it was, it was NBA sponsored Pokemon Go, uh, where you could, I think, play like one v one with like the gacha players you would get. Uh, I think it <laughs> didn't ever leave Alpha before they killed it off. Uh, By the they, time I found out about it, I think we were just in like a group call one night, hmm. and I was just looking at Niantic's web page, and I was like, "There's an NBA game," and then like three weeks later, it shut down. Like yeah. it was bad. It was they have a Monster Hunter one. I think people like that one, but. I've heard that one's, no one's good. And, uh, yeah, like, like uh, that's that's a Japan thing. That's not for that's not for that's not for our audience for the for the eight of crubs specifically for sure. Yeah, um, right, it's just the thing where like you know, despite how unhappy Pokemon Go players are with the game at all times, it is still quite popular. A lot of people do still play it, mm-hmm. but nothing since then. Um, if I could get into the one that was not as notable, but one that kind of crossed my mind, I'm just gonna. Put them on blast. Supermassive Games, uh, developers of Until Dawn, which was a game I liked a lot. And then they've kind of kept doing that ever since. And I've never felt any pull. And then I look around and I feel like everyone who has played like the Dark Pictures anthology is like, eh, it's okay. It wasn't as good as Until Dawn. I think it's Nico tough. likes them, doesn't he? Uh, he's played them. I don't know that he. I, I think I, he was I, playing them, hoping to like them, and yeah. Nico did not like them. That's kind of where that went. I think if he liked them, we would have heard about it, and if he really didn't like them, <laughs> we would have heard about it. So yeah. the fact that we haven't heard about it, it probably means yeah. they plus came McGeager and went. killed him. Yeah. Plus, he got completely demolished in Pokemon cards. Um, yeah. that's a really good one. I think it's tough with Supermassive in particular because that style of game. Uh, obviously still exists with the Life is Stranges and whatever the Detroit Become Human. What's, what's that studio name? Quantic Dream. Uh, oh. Quantic Dream. Thank you. Uh, whatever yeah. whatever those folks are doing next, I, I don't care. Uh, oh, they were doing a Star oh, Wars one before it got shut down, didn't it? The, the Star Wars one in like yeah. 2028 or whatever yeah. far off date they came. Yeah, that's not coming out. Um, <laughs> so I think it's tough because that's sort of like just interactive movie type of game is really hard to pull off especially when you're doing just horror with them so i mm. not that i give them a pass but the even the original until dawn was in development hell for like years as a ps move so, game before it came out yeah um so that's one where i'm just kind of mean but i was just thinking about it yeah. i was like man until dawn was 2015 huh yeah rough um, niantic's a good one as well because man they're they're just trying to cash in on having that uh having all that data like they're just selling the data more than mm. they're doing anything else with making good games. Um, and I keep giving it to them <laughs> every day. <laughs> Give me that Help. data. I mean, you're, you're giving them walking data. That doesn't really do much for anybody. Uh, mm. Niantic's really the perfect example of all money in, in mobile games is fake because they yeah. have all this extra, you know, um, they have all this extra data that they can use to sell. They have inflated player numbers that they can use to sell. I mean, they don't run ads on Pokemon Go uh, directly. Um, but other games do like you've seen that Star Trek game that's everywhere that I don't know the name of Fleet Commander. I don't care. Um, you've seen that game's <laughs> ads somewhere. And if you play any mobile games, the top ad yeah. banner is going to have that game, because then if you install that game, they have an inflated player base because they also pay people to install their game. Trust me, Em and I found that out. Uh, we didn't do it, but we we did influencer marketing briefly. Uh, yes. And they they were they're paying a lot of money, and they do that so that then they can charge more to the ad sellers to sell other mobile game ads on their game for like I, I don't know um, Raid Shadow Legends, and it's just an endless loop of fake money until the venture capitalist firms shut down the games. Mm-hmm. And Pokemon Go is the least toxic of those probably because they don't run ads because it's Pokemon. Um, but uh, it's I proof. brace for the day that they do. 
I mean, I, it'll I, happen eventually, right? Like Nintendo's going to yeah. realize suddenly that there's a billion dollars a year sitting there. I see. Mm-hmm. I don't. Nintendo's weird in that they never ran Mario Run as a free game, even still. Uh, they are more likely to shut games down like Mario Kart Tour before they are to run ads Go to on the them. wolves of gross yeah. practices. Like yeah, I mean, Current. it could change. They're one of the weird ones <laughs> yeah. in that like they just don't listen to investors at all. They just do what they want. Um, yeah, eventually that'll change. Um, yeah, all it takes is for, for, you know, activist investors to get in there and yeah. make them actually want to do that. Uh, and then Nintendo becomes EA pretty fast. Yeah, I just he, want there to be another Wii U so that I can see all those those switch tubers out there suddenly really <laughs> struggling, like not financially. I just want, I, like I just want to live in the world like a Black Mirror alternate universe one week where I see sure. all the switch tubers go into clinically depressed switch tuber mode because, mm-hmm. man, it'd be real funny to see how dire it would get again. I like the Wii U days were rough. And yeah, I was invited yeah, to Nintendo New York to play Amiibo Festival too. <laughs> uh, yeah. People look back and they say the Wii U was this, you know, great. What? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. It's, it's the games bad. that were good were good, but I'd sit there for like eight months between games and been like, man, I yeah. guess I can buy Donkey Kong for forty cents this month because Reggie said sorry. NES what? games are forty cents a month <laughs> until August. There was one of them each month. Also, here's a video advertising that they made the Wii U OS faster. You should buy the Pikmin <laughs> game, the one that's $3 and just a video. Mm. And then the other oh, one God. that accompanies it on 3DS that's also just a video. Oh, I don't miss those times. It's real good. It's real. Oh. It's fun. So uh, I was see, thinking but, about yes, the... <laughs> yes, you go on. I don't, I don't, oh, yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm vamping because I don't, I don't have one off the top of my head yet. I was thinking about, about the One Hit Wonders thing, and I found myself in like three categories, and and tried to to figure out what I wanted, right? Because, like, you have your one-hit wonders, like, Irrational, right, with Bioshock, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like that's a fair one because they're Take-Two, right? Like, Mm. yeah, they're one-hit wonder, but Bioshock still exists, and Mm Take-Two still owns them and stuff like that. And then I thought about things like Concerned Ape with Stardew Valley or, you know, things like, there's a one-hit wonder. Yeah, but he's still making it, right? And then, then I came across one that I think is the funniest one-hit wonder of all time, Fez. which is the Polytron Corporation. Yep. With Fez. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This was my third one. I was like, if no one mentions Fez, I'm going to mention Fez. Because I think that is the funniest one-hit wonder of all time. No, you're, absolute, you're absolutely right. Because it didn't have to be a one-hit wonder. He got, he got mad on Twitter and canceled the second game, and that's it. Yeah, and, well, it, 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 he canceled it, and it's not just that's it. It's also then the developers were like, "Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you I mean, get, we're I not guess making the fired. game we're making anymore." <laughs> oh, <Yep. sighs> it's so that's a, that's a really good one, Brody. Do you have one off the top of your head while I still try and think of one here? Yeah, well, when <laughs> when Chris threw out the question, I've been thinking about it since he did, and I, I was struggling to actually come up with any like that I, I could think of, and I know that they're. They exist and they're out there, but like I got, I don't know, choice paralysis or analysis paralysis. I just couldn't click with one. Um, mm. There's a few I could say that are that are kind of just mean. Um, so I'm going to say Team Cherry because they've only put out one game. And it's this is the oh, one you joked about saying, and then you're yeah, like, no, what? I'm going to yeah. say it. <laughs> no, I kind of because I kind of got it right because they put out Hollow Knight and it was fantastic. And since then, every every show that goes by, every Game Awards, every E3 conference, every Nintendo Direct, every State of Play, every Xbox showcase, whatever it is, I'm sitting there waiting. And to the point where now I'm I, I never expect it. I'm not I don't, I don't spec Silk Song. I don't it's, it's, it's just going to arrive one day and it's going to arrive on like Xbox and Switch where I'm oh, I'll still be like, well, I guess I'll wait to play it on PlayStation because I want the trophies because blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, this is depressing. So now that you've said all this, they're going to cancel the game on Twitter. Yeah. 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 They're going to be a one hit wonder. Canceling yeah. Silk Song. Yeah. It's all your fault, Brody. I see uh, Frankenmutt in our Twitch chat because this is done live brought up Jonathan Blow and Notch and like yeah Notch Notch is a one hit wonder but he made a quadrillion dollars and Minecraft is the biggest game of all time so I think I'd give him a pass but Jonathan Blow with number none right like Braid one game and then then he made The Witness which I I don't 
think it's fair to call a game. It's a, did I? It's an attack. Did I tell you this? I think we <laughs> talked about this. M. There's the there's a podcast about the making of the Braid 20th Anniversary Edition. <laughs> uh, yes. Which. For one, the game, or I'm sorry, it's not 20th anniversary, it was just anniversary edition, sorry. I was, I was going to say for one, it's not 20 years. But the podcast for this game that came out in 2024 after being announced in like 2018 for the anniversary, I'm pretty sure, mm. uh, was recorded in 2022. <laughs> they, didn't, oh. they didn't go back and re-record it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I like that. Um, I Boy. will say... Jonathan mentioning Blow. mentioning Notch, Mojang is not a bad one because every game that's come out after Minecraft in oh, the Minecraft a, yeah, series right. is bad. Yeah, from, at Minecraft least from what Legends? I've heard. I don't I don't blame the, the him, Diablo so. clone wasn't Minecraft bad. Legends the Diablo is clone was okay. And, and Minecraft uh, <laughs> inside you there are two wolves. What's the other one? <laughs> the other they did the Dungeons. What? Dungeons. 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 Okay, Dungeons was fine. -ish, yeah, that was the I Diablo guess. one. Legends was bad. It was really dumb, and it, it felt like nobody had played the game. Like, I played it when they did the, the it's out on Xbox, and I was like, all right, I'll go try it out. And I played it for, like, two days, really gave it a shot, right? I put in my, like, solid 15 hours on that to try and figure out, because I just found every hour I was like, I don't understand. I don't know who this game is for. I don't understand how they got this far. There's got to be something that's after this, right? Like, there's got to be something that makes you go, oh, clearly there's a good game in here. And there's not. There's nothing. I don't understand it. I feel like a single playtest session with any gamer would have been like, this is real bad, guys. Why, why are we putting this out? Like, and, and they would have had to try to answer that, right? Like, there must have been somebody. This is a Sarah Bond game. Okay, it is a Sarah <laughs> Bond game. I st so I outside of Mojang, I haven't thought of uh, like I have a couple. Yeah, but I have your answer. I well, know so what your answer is. What? What? what go ahead. What's my answer? So it, your answer is Superbot. To be yeah, I guess you're not wrong. They did they did reorganize afterwards, but they got shut down. They really didn't have a chance. <laughs> no, um, they didn't. I was gonna say. Um, I forget the name of the company, the Polish studio that now works on Fortnite that did uh, Bulletstorm. People can fly. Oh, people, people can, can fly. Because uh, they only made the one game, and then they got bought, and then they got unbought, I think. So now they're kind of just working on Fortnite. Um, but mm -hmm. Bulletstorm is really, really fun and really good. And I think that that game got really a really bad rap because epic just lumped it in with like if you pre-order this game you get the beta for gears of war judgment uh yeah. the the one that's not on game pass which says a lot um mm. so that's um that's one i would think of uh i could be an asshole and say naughty dog or bethesda uh, but those, neither of those. If you were a real snarky gaming but podcast, neither of those are true. Easily. Yeah, neither of those I, are I true. Did, as much as I'm I did think sad of uh, about Sen Senzaru for Sly Four. Yeah, they, you didn't like they've... Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal. Nah. God, yeah, because they've worked on other things, right? And they worked on yeah, the, the Spyro remake, and their work isn't terrible on it. But but really, the only game that they've done that I feel like was was good front to back, all them was was Sly Four. Yeah. And the other one, I thought of when think I thought of Superbot because I thought of Senzaru, and then that led me to. Um, United Front Games with Mod Nation Racers, and I guess Sleeping Dogs as well. So I guess there are so many game, that but... shut down after one game because of the way the industry is. So it's, it's so hard. Like I don't want to name any of those. Chris, exactly. what Brody, yeah. Brody, I have to stop you. Yeah, they made Bentley's Hack Pack. That's true. They did make well, Bentley's Hack Pack. That's so true. You're they did make Bentley's the biggest hack. hit of all time. <laughs> <laughs> what a game. The reason the PSN shutdown did not happen for PS3, the Bentley's, Bentley's hack hack hackers hack. rose up. That's a fact. You can you can look at it. That's a fact. <laughs> that's a no fact. malarkey here, Jack. <laughs> Are we done? Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have as far as like one hit wonders that I can think of off the top of my head. I was looking at my games behind me, like I could say Team Bondi, but again, like they all kind of shut down, so it's 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 hard. Yeah. Uh and if, if you Want wanna be shut us down hard? Hit oh. the 